Hello, everybody, and welcome to tonight's graduation ceremony. Super excited to have you here. My name is Woodson Martin. I'm the general manager of the App Exchange at Salesforce. This is my 15th year with Salesforce. It's awesome to see so many familiar faces who've been with us for many years in this ecosystem. An ecosystem that is growing uh, by leaps and bounds is one of the most exciting places to be working uh, in, certainly in the enterprise software applications business. We are a incredibly honored by all of the commitment we see, all of the work we see uh, from our partners. And what's awesome is that our customers, our trailblazers, love your stuff. Um, and we see that in the growth of the marketplace. We're really excited. We've j just recently crossed 7.6 million installs from the app exchange uh, of, of your work uh, into customer environments, which is incredibly exciting. Uh, we have more than 5,000 active listings on the app exchange today, which is a great accomplishment because we've also deleted a bunch this year because they... Um, had grown stale or outdated. So we are super excited about this thriving ecosystem we've created. You've probably seen the IDC reports that talk about the incredible growth of the ecosystem, both what we've already accomplished, but what's ahead of us. Uh, $4.2 trillion uh, uh, of an economy uh, around Salesforce with this app exchange ecosystem at the center of it. And it uh, is a great honor for me to be part of this. I am really excited about our graduating class uh, today, and we're fired up to see some uh, great pitches uh, today. So thank you for all the dedication and effort you've put into this program over the last 11, 12 weeks, where we, we have something like that. So thank you. You probably all know that by heart. Um, it's a big commitment of time and of energy. Uh, and... I know from many of you I've talked to tonight, uh, many of you feel like it's been very rewarding uh, already. The fruits of what you have done already lie ahead, right? As you take what you have learned and you bring this into the marketplace and you begin to you know, bring on new customers, help them be successful, leverage what you've learned here um, to grow. So we're super excited um, to have you here. Can't wait to see your presentations. Thank you for joining. A big, huge thank you to our Accelerate team, Mike and Emily, for pulling uh, this program together. And there's a lot of other helpers behind the scenes. Of course, you see some of those people come in and present. So to everybody who has been a mentor in the program, who has come in to deliver uh, content and to share stories and learnings, a big, huge thank you to that group also. And I'll turn it back over to Mike to get us ready. You ready? Just as we get started, what I wanted to do is kind of just frame, frame things up for you. Um, the ode to the App Exchange, if you wish, is a long journey. And what we've endeavored to do with the Accelerate program is to help, to, or to, is to help our partners strategically align with Salesforce and ultimately deliver amazing products to market. And I think that you'll see that we're well on our way with this graduating class right now. So we've actually delivered over 50 hours of content. So that's one thing that's relatively impressive. That's a fraction of the amount of effort that these companies have actually put into what you're going to see today. So I want you all to think about that when you're thinking about these folks up here telling you about what they're doing because they're just getting started and it's really wonderful to see. So with that, what I'm going to do is segue over to Emily so that we can actually start the introductions and get the show rolling. Thanks. Good evening, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us tonight. I'm very excited to introduce our first company that's going to be pitching tonight. Uh, it is PartnerTap. So PartnerTap helps sales and channel teams sell more with partners and build high-performing partner ecosystems. I'd like to invite Cassandra Golston, CEO of PartnerTap, to introduce the company. Thank you, Emily. 
anyone who's ever managed a partnership in channel, anyone who's ever managed a partnership or a channel partnership has dealt with account mapping, whether it be an ISV partnership or an SI partnership. They're always trying to figure out what sales rep on this account is owned by a partner sales rep on another account. And whether that channel manager is going through mountains of spreadsheets or they hire an army of interns to go through that data mapping, it is an arduous process. But it doesn't just stop at the channel manager level. It goes all the way down to the sales rep level. Sales reps know that their best leads are going to come from partners. And so they are trying to figure out who on these target accounts on my own are owned by my most trusted partners. And so they personally are going through this account mapping process. I'm Cassandra. I'm the CEO and founder of PartnerTap, and I lived this problem as an enterprise sales rep. And to solve this, we built an application that allows companies to pull in CRM data to our platform, and then we marry that information to show channel executives where they have mutual client overlap, where they have market opportunity together. But we don't stop there. We actually meet the salespeople where they're at. On the go, on mobile, they can find their most trusted partners or right inside of their CRM. And when their territories change at the beginning of the year or their fiscal year, all of that alignment just happens on the next day within PartnerTap. We also provide executives a way to measure what was sourced and influenced from their most trusted partners so these teams can co-sell effectively together. We have two companies that you might be familiar with, SAP Concur and ADP, have been using our platform for over a year. And within that first year, they drove over 200% growth through their channel by connecting their field sellers across accounts. I'm Cassandra Golston. I'm the CEO and co-founder of PartnerTap. Thank you, Cassandra. Right, so next up, we have iBuy. iBuy has developed a patented media overlay technology that enables consumers to be able to purchase products and interact with elements within videos and images. I'd like to invite Ryan Scott up to tell us more. Thank you, Emily. Uh, at iBuy, our mission is to help our clients uh, to sell their products. Oops, sorry, wrong way. To sell their sell. Uh, our mission is to help our clients sell their products more effectively and seamlessly by making digital images and videos shoppable. How do we do this? So. Let's, we all know how difficult it can be to find uh, quality content online. Let's say we have a fire that we need to put out. We search how to use a fire extinguisher. We're going to be bombarded with ads and pop-ups normally unrelated to the content we're trying to view. This can annoy and frustrate the end users, and it's a distraction away from monetization. So let's think about the life cycle of a client or of a consumer. You see a product within a video or reading an article that you like. And what's your path? What's your next step? Your next step is going to be one of two paths. You're going to either go try and find the product, which you may end up getting distracted along the way, and finding a com competitive product that you end up purchasing instead. Another possible outcome is that you can't find the product and you give up your search while never really returning to the content that you were viewing in the first place. So in talking with leading uh, brands, we came up with some common questions. One, do you have a clear path to purchase? Maybe, but we think that it could be better. Do you have actionable data on how your media is performing? Most companies think so, but they lack the insight and analytical data to know for sure. 
do you want to improve your monetization strategy? You should. There's always room to improve. Do you want to capture your audience wherever they are online? Everyone does. But how do you do it? With Commerce Cloud, Commerce Cloud and iBuy, we help you monetize your content wherever it is. So in this example, we have a video that is enabled with the iBuy interactive overlay. On the left-hand side, you'll see a product role, and this product role can be configured with a variety of options, including e-commerce, lead generation, and link outs. So upon playing the video, uh, there we go, upon playing the video, you'll see uh, the product role collapses to get out of the way of the viewer's experience, but is still ex accessible by clicking on that ellipses on the side. You'll also see that along the uh, timeline, there's a dot, and this dot represents a hotspot. So hotspots and cue points can bring products front and center at designated times of the video. So here we can click on the, uh, the hotspot, add the item to our cart, and actually complete the entire checkout all without leaving the content. So let's look at some stats. Industry averages today are 0.3% click-through for video and images. This is pretty abysmal, but people are pretty happy with it today. Can it be better? What we're seeing is by making the items within the video actionable and shoppable, we're seeing an increase of around 1,200%. Uh, and this is comparing page impression to uh, traditional video ad views. And uh, we do that mainly because our overlays work whether you play the video or not. So I'd like to say thank you for your time. And to get started along this journey of shoppable media, please come and see one of my colleagues or myself after the event. Thank you, Ryan. And next up, I'd like to invite ProFormap. So ProFormap uses AI for commercial real estate to develop a one-stop platform that combines data analytics with mapping technology and brokerage services to simplify and expedite real estate acquisitions, particularly for builders focused on affordable housing. So I'd like to invite Sam and Iman to come on up. Thank you. Hi, everyone. Uh, good evening. My name is Iman Novin. I'm the president and founder of Proformap. And my name is Sam Woodburn. I'm head of client relations for Proformap. So Proformap is artificial intelligence for commercial real estate acquisitions. And our core mission at Proformap is to streamline the real estate acquisitions process and increase the production of affordable housing. Um, I just need a clicker. There we go. So uh, everyone here can relate to the fact that we're in a massive housing crisis uh, here in the Bay Area. Um, employees are moving out of state. Homelessness is at an all-time high. Um, we're enduring longer and longer commutes, um, and all of us worry about our children one day being able to afford a house uh, in the Bay Area. Um, this is a problem that uh, has broader economic impacts across all income levels. Um, a report by the McKinsey Group um, recently found that the lack of affordable housing results in over $140 billion in lost economic output in just the state of California alone. And so this isn't just a problem for the Bay Area to solve. Uh, this is a problem that we see in headlines across the country. And so across the country, there's a 7 million gap in affordable units of housing that need to be produced. Um, and we also know that population in the U.S. is expected to increase 75 million by the year 2060. So with a problem of this magnitude, where do we start? Uh, like Zillow for commercial real estate, Proform Map is working to redefine the market and fundamentally change how properties are bought and sold. So to do this, Proform Map, uh, uh, we've created an end-to-end -end real estate acquisition solution that leverages data analysis and machine learning to bring automation to the current process. Um, using geographic information systems, generative building models, um, and rapid Proforma financial analysis to increase the pool of qualified opportunities for buyers. We're creating better informed buyers, helping them remove complexity and time from the conventionally fragmented process. Um, this type of rapid scenario analysis um, has never been achieved at scale in commercial real estate. Um, we believe it can fundamentally change how assets change hands and projects are built. 
And we've built Proform app with our customers front of mind to tackle acquisitions and efficiencies in commercial real estate in a market that's 180 billion for multifamily alone. And different from residential real estate, commercial is a market that's traditionally been dominated by the sell side where it's a listing procurement business. Um, and so what we wanna do is serve buyers better by bringing them advanced decision-making through data analytics and mapping. So Proformat success, su success to date includes over 300 new units of affordable housing um, and represents $21 million in land transactions since 2019. Um, but we're just starting to scratch the surface. Um, it's going to take solutions like Proformap working in partnership with major employers and the public sector to start rapidly increasing housing production levels to make a large enough dent. Um, we thank you for uh, being part of this journey with us as we uh, blaze a new trail in the commercial real estate industry with Salesforce as our partner. Thank you. Thank you. So next up we have To Whom. To whom stakeholder lifecycle management is a B2B sales prospecting app uh, with a ready-built methodology that enables sales managers and sales rep collaboration to nurture economic buyer relationship, relationships while also enhancing existing ones. And we have Bucky and Michelle Strong to introduce the company to you. Good evening, everybody. I want to introduce you to stakeholder lifecycle management. And the persona we sell to is the sales leader, right? And if you think about the challenge sales leaders have, 90% of the economic buyers their team should be selling to have never heard from their reps. And so SAP used our software with one team and their revenue over a two year period grew 700%. So let me take you through the business challenge that these sales leaders face. We walk them through what we call a stakeholder relationship health check. And the first question I ask them is, hey, have you targeted the economic buyer type that you should be selling to. And to have even a little more fun, I ask, if I ask your reps this question, would they all give me the same answer? And sales leaders, well, probably not, right? So the second question I ask them is, okay, let's say we've got a hypothetical territory of 10 accounts, two stakeholders we're selling to, these 20 folks that we should be selling to. What percentage of these folks do your reps even know the name of the person they should be selling to? And sales leaders typically answer around 25 to 50%. You can see they're starting to get a little nervous about their answers. The third question we ask them is, okay, same 10 accounts, same two stakeholders, 20 economic buyers you should be selling to. What percentage of those folks has you, have your reps contacted over the past year? And most sales leaders in B2B answer this question around 10%. I had my first none the other day, which was a little shocking. But what, here's what we know. Those answers are way too low. Right. The second thing is sales leaders, top executives in our organizations, these sales leaders had to guess and they really don't have any way of making the situation better. So the best way to tell you how to whom works is to take you through how a customer used it. So SAP had those challenges that we just identified. And what we did was we set up a strategy for them of targeting four personas that they should be selling to. And we identified very quickly, hey, here's the percentage of these economic buyers you don't know. Here's the percentage of these economic buyers you have not connected with. And we helped facilitate their customer for life, pro life program with a concept that we call collaborations. Well, to operationalize this strategy, we have something called the Whom Update Brief. And it's a call that goes something like this every month. Hey, rep, who'd you say we're going to find and connect with? How'd it go? Who are you going to find and connect with next period? And so you have a big math problem when you have this sparse of a database, right? And so over time, you can start connecting and finding these folks, and it clearly leads to revenue. So SAP actually used this over a two-year period. And in year one, they went from being connected with 14% of their economic buyers to 86%. Over a two-year period across these four economic buyers, their revenue grew 700%. And for sales leaders in the audience, you always compare your results against other sales teams. The growth for this team was five times greater than the next closest team. So we have a couple products on the market in the app exchange listing right now. We've got to whom stakeholder lifecycle management management for B2B. We're very excited to announce this week. We've got to whom for auto suppliers, a complete CRM experience for auto suppliers. It's a problem that's really never been tackled before. And, for all the sales leaders in the audience, if you want to achieve quota attainment like that or even better, 
We'd love to talk to you for 30 minutes. So thank you very much. Next up, we have Punch Out To Go. So Punch Out To Go is a global B2B technology integration and data translation company specializing in integration of e-commerce platforms and procurement systems. Punch Out To Go helps simplify the B2B buying cycle by reducing integration complexities and rapidly deploying the right technology. Joe, the floor is yours. Thank you. So I'm Joe Sansone with Punch Out To Go. And for those of you that don't really know us, uh, we make B2B integrations easy uh, and allow buyers and sellers to, tra to transact online. We're in fact the only company that is solely focused on e-procurement integrations. We've been in business for nine years and have over 750 clients across 40 plus countries. We've now integrated with more than 120 different e-procurement systems. And I'll get to the big number, we've had more than $200 billion transacted uh, through our gateway. Uh, so why do these companies trust Punch Out to go? Uh, it's because we help companies and, and we help you do business the way your customers want to do business, which immediately uh, creates a variety of benefits. Uh, we take the rich e-commerce experience of the Salesforce B2B Commerce Cloud and we empower it with B2B integrations, creating a simple, intuitive purchasing process that helps you attract new business, increase customer satisfaction with that experience, grow existing accounts because when it's easy to buy, people buy more. And it helps you retain key customers. We also accelerate the sales cycle uh, by streamlining and automating order processing, completely eliminating manual data entry and all of the resulting data entry errors that can be extremely costly. And finally, we help you deliver products faster, which helps Salesforce customers get paid faster. Uh, so because of those benefits, here are some of the companies that trust Punch Out to go, and we certainly plan on adding a lot of logos of Salesforce customers to this slide soon. Um, so how does it all work? Punch Out to Go has a cloud-based gateway that sits between the Salesforce B2B Commerce Cloud and different e-procurement systems. Now these different procurement systems speak different languages and have different data protocols and Punch Out to Go translates that data and allows both systems to talk to each other seamlessly. And that create some powerful things we can do. First, we can authenticate buyers directly into the Commerce Cloud, uh, let them shop, add items to their cart, and transfer those items back into the procurement system. That's called the punch out process. And from there, we can use this open line of communication to automate purchase orders, invoices, shipping notifications, and any other electronic documents that those uh, businesses need uh, to go through the procure to pay process. So let's take a quick look at what this looks like in practice. So here's Coupa, it's a procurement system. You can see all of the suppliers. And with one click, we can transport B2B buyers directly into the Salesforce B2B Commerce Cloud. They can see only the products and pricing that they're supposed to see. And in this example, we're procuring coffee. You can see that rich experience with product images, descriptions. Uh, we're adding items to our cart as we normally would. And it looks like we're going with some nice dark roast. Um, so now we are going to view our cart, and this is where the really cool thing happens. Instead of checking out and putting in credit card information, we are going to transfer that cart and all of that cart data and every important piece of data that's important to the buyer procurement system, we're taking that and we're putting it right back into Coupa. So you can see we are very quickly transported right back into Coupa. Our products are there with all the information we need. There's no data entry at all and we're ready to submit for approval. And it really is that easy. Um, and from there, like we said, it doesn't stop because from there we do purchase orders and invoices and any other documents you would need. Uh, lastly, we make B2B integration scalable. Uh, you connect your Salesforce B2B Commerce Cloud with us and we branch out and connect with any number of buyers on any e-procurement system. Uh, you can learn more at punchouttogo.com and that's all I have. Thanks. So uh, for Toka now, uh, B2B events, we all know are big things and marketers know that they're one of the best ways to generate leads. But at the event, there's a lot of important conversations that are unfortunately not captured in their CRM. So Toka has developed a solution that allows companies to capture those interactions using intelligent tags 
and then syncing them directly to Salesforce for follow-up actions. So let's see how that's done. Take it away, Tomasa. Thank you, Mike. Hello, everybody. So we are Toka, but in fact, for this presentation, we're going to be two different people. I'm Tom, a salesperson at Cosby. And I'm going to be Steve, a salesman at Toyox. Excellent. So we are outside the Moscone Center, uh, Moscone West, Moscone South. We just finished our user conference, just walking out, and we have known each other for a while. We're just meeting outside. Hey, Steve, how are you? I'm doing good on you, Tommaso. Very good, thank you. What was your event? My event, my event was great. We had 2,500 people came. We had great speakers, a lot of engagement. I have uh, at least 80 business cards here, an Excel sheet when I was at the booth with the 300 more people. And um, there's a lot of work ahead of me, but pretty happy. Great conference. How was yours? Ours was awesome too. We had 2,000 attendees. I made two new, 200 new contacts. Things are great. Tomorrow, I'm going to fly to Hawaii with my wife. Wow, you're going to fly to Hawaii? Yeah, Hawaii? and I was going to offer you, why don't we go celebrate tonight? We're going to celebrate tonight? Are you yep. completely crazy? You want to click your little thing here? <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, it's an old friend. It's Michael found. <laughs> Uh, oh, celebrate! You completely nuts? Are you out of your mind? You want to celebrate? I have a lot of work to do. I have to put all these things in Salesforce. If it's not in Salesforce, it doesn't exist. And then I have to to put all this and upload with the mapping. And then I have to see my VP of Sales, and he's going to ask me, "Who did you meet?" I can't remember everybody. I'm probably going to have to throw away some cards and then invent stories. It's hard to invent stories about people. Celebrate! You nuts? Are you completely out of your mind? Well, my job is done. What do you mean it's done? Well, I mean we use Toka. You use what? Toka. What Let the me show fuck you. is Toka? <laughs> Let me show you. Come okay. a little bit closer. All right. What are you going to do? I'm going to scan your badge, just like yeah, that. Yeah, my conference badge. Yeah. And You're so good? Yeah, and so what? So now you're going to tell me a lot of information. As you said, that this is going to be lost if I'm not capturing them on the spot. I can actually do that using the tags. I can say, wow. okay, Tom is interested in the product, he is a decision maker, this and is exactly I can the capture question I all of this. Ask. And now when I click that, this is now associated to your contact. Wow, this is very impressive, but hey, you smarty little Frenchie, how are you gonna add, <laughs> you know, if I tell you something that is not a tag? What are you gonna do with that? Well, huh? I, I know that for an Italian guy, you like the 49ers, so let's get that into the notes. How can I like the 49ers? How do you know that? Oh, wow, yeah, let's go 49ers. We're gonna win the Super Bowl in two weeks. Actually, next week. So now I have actually everything I need about you. I have the tags and I have the notes, and everything is going to fly directly into Salesforce. At that point, we can do lead scoring, we can do reporting, forecasting, we can even monitor the ROI for each event we are organizing. We can also do personalized marketing and automated actions. That reinforces our investment into Salesforce as well. This is impressive. So Salesforce is actually a little engine that we feed the beast. Instead of driving a Ferrari at 10 miles an hour, you can go a lot faster. This Definitely, yes. Can I join your company? What do I have to do? I want Toka. Just come to Hawaii. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you for that. And now we're going to welcome up our next company. So we're going to have Sanjeev from uh, Doden. Um, Doden is an AI technology company that powers personality assessments. You can actually try it out today. They're in the business of helping companies source and screen, jo screen job applicants, uh, candidates faster and make their hiring process broader, faster, and richer. You Sanjeev. It. You got it. Thank you, Mike. And hi, everybody. We are really, really excited to be here. Um, earlier today in a presentation, I saw that one of the top three challenges for the organizations in 2019 was hiring the sales talent. So I want to share with you one of my experiences when I was hiring sales talent in my company. So I, once in a while, I would land up in a situation where I would think that I found a super strong candidate who is going to help me change the world. So this is how I saw the candidate. But, you know, he, I thought he's going to be a great warrior, but you don't always get what you see. What I sometimes used to get is this, right? Unproductive candidate who is causing a lot of friction 
and instead of changing the world i i end up changing the talent so why does this happen if you talk to the ceos they say that you know some of the top reasons why this happens is either the personality misfit with the job function sales function in this case or it's something to do with the bad team synergy now the ground level reality is that most of the organizations when they interview everybody is focusing so much on the skills that's an easy thing to do the cultural alignment is is largely you know it's it's underweight and that's because it's very hard thing to do and companies you lose a lot, lot of money every year because of the bad hires and that's where we come in we help to bring that balance we do the cultural alignment of the job candidates and we do it in a way that is really really simple and really easy what's more we do it in less than a minute without asking a single question we broaden the sourcing by tipping dipping into our very rich 340 million strong database of candidates we make the screening faster by screening the candidates against the definition of the ideal job in less than a minute and we make the interview process much richer by providing a wealth of information about the candidates including how to interact with the candidate effectively during the onboarding even even in the post hire here is an example of how we do it all we want to uh, ask candidates to do is to take a quick color and contrast test as well as submit the resume our ai engine then crunches that data and spits out a lot of valuable information some examples are here on the top for example is the uh, prioritized list of candidates which is based on how well you fit the job how well you fit with the team as well as the the overall um, uh, cultural fit what you see at the bottom is what we call as a team synergy report which is based on the compatibility between the team members and there is a lot more that that we provide that can be used for improving the employee engagement as well we have worldwide set of customers in many different verticals including qsrs financial services government etc and here is the proof that the system works these are the real validations from our customers over 91% accuracy in our results our customers have seen 23% improvement in talent retention and the most important one is the last one 2.5x sales quota achievement improvement which is staggering so as you can see we not only can help in improving your top line but also in improving your bottom line so to close it out we do we help the companies to do the hiring broader faster and richer i want to welcome you all to scan that qr code and spend a minute and within a minute we can also tell you about your personality thank you yes so we're going to switch gears uh, again a little bit one of the things that uh, salesforce holds near and dear to our hearts is actually diversity and inclusion and our next partner um actually helps to solve that so name coach uh we're going to have uh, john coming up here there he is excellent so let's get started and and, and let's actually get a little bit more more personal here Um our names are central to our unique identities and saying them correctly is the first step in connecting with, respecting and appreciating each other. Name Coach aims to solve this common problem of name mispronunciation in as many critical settings as possible, from everyday conversations in the workplace to interacting with your prospects and customers. Name Coach will help you connect with res- connect with, respect and build rapport with each and every customer. Take it away, John. Thank you. It's just a green button. There you go. Green button. Okay. Perfect. Thanks so much, Mike. So my name's John Lasavita. I'm our head of growth here at Name Coach. So I want to start with a question for for the audience here. So by a show of hands, how many of you have ever mispronounced somebody's name or had your own name mispronounced? It's pretty much everybody. Yeah, I think we've all been there, right? It's a pretty common problem. And I actually think that this this quote here by uh, Dr. Karen Panassi uh highlights it nicely in the, in the in the the corporate workspace. Um mispronouncing a name in the corporate workspace accumulates like bricks in the walls of exclusion, making differences real and acting as barriers to belonging, right? So really 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 a big deal. So I actually want to turn that into a real life situation here uh, and a real life story. So our founder and CEO Praveen Shanbag was at his sister's commencement ceremony back in 2010. You can see the picture right here. And as she was walking across the stage, she actually had her name butchered first middle and last name which is a very alienating and in 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 upsetting experience not just for her but for the family as well um and and so there's there's a great thing that came out of this though uh Praveen actually created a name coach 
And in 2014, when she graduated um, and, and, and actually got her PhD, um, they actually used Name Coach at the University of Cincinnati, and they got her name right. And if you look at the pictures here, if you know her like we do, that picture uh, on the left-hand side for you, that's a fake smile. That's not real at all. On the right-hand side here, much better experience, and that's a real, you know, real smile there. So as I mentioned, we started in the commencement space for name pronunciation, but we really noticed a huge focus on diversity and inclusion in education. And so we wanted to focus on that. We started integrating into other university systems. And from there, we created the world's largest and most accurate name pronunciation database. That database is now plugged into tools like Salesforce, which has launched us in the corporate market quite a bit, which is what I want to focus on here today. So this is actually a great example of what it looks like in Salesforce. Every single lead contact in their profile here, um, you're going to have a name pronunciation for their first and last name. Right. So like I said, that's a, that's a great example there. You're never going to mispronounce a name again. And there's a lot of different use cases for it. So Salesforce, as we know, um, you know, they work in education, they work in corporate. Um, so we do the same. As I mentioned, we started in education, but with Salesforce, we can do even more. We can work with enrollment services, making sure that, you know, applicants are getting their names pronounced properly. When we don't even know who those students are. Uh, advisory services, tutoring, counseling advisors are able to get the students' names correct when they're going in for these tough conversations sometimes. It really just makes this, the, the situation and, and conversation that much easier. And then alumni, right? We all want to raise money for the school. So it's great to get people's names right when you're making that, that, that cold call. And that goes right into the corporate space. So diversity and inclusion, as I mentioned, that's, that's, that's where we went in, in education. We do that a lot in the corporate workspace as well, making sure that you're getting your you know, peers, employees' names pronounced properly, breaking down those barriers, uh, building stronger relationships, and creating a sense of belonging. And then, of course, customer service and sales. We've all been there where we're making a cold call, talking to somebody we don't know. We butcher their name. They either hang up or the conversation's just not strong. Being able to get their name pronounced properly is going to ensure that you're starting that conversation off on the right foot, you're having a strong conversation, like I said, building the relationship, preventing hangups, closing more deals, keeping your customers happy. We've been able to help over 200 clients from the California Community College System, two and a half million students, 115 schools, um, to Stanford, Conversica, you name it. You know, like I said, we can help your organization build stronger relationships. With Name Coach, you belong. Here's my contact information and a link here where you can actually go to our app exchange listing. Thank you. Excellent. So now we're going to be rounding it out with our last graduate here. So Circante, Circante is actually a silver consulting partner that focuses on helping marketers be successful with the Salesforce platform. They help customers use Pardot, Sales Cloud, and marketing technology to its fullest potential. As part of that effort, they've expanded their offerings to include the development of products for the App Exchange. Yay, we all love that. Circante's uh, first solution is now in security review, about to be released, very proud of that, and will be the first Pardot-focused SI partner with a product on the App Exchange. So why don't you take it away, Andrea? Thank you. All right, Adam, I got to talk to you about something. Right now? Yeah, I, this is really important. I really just can't wait. So you've been on our team for six months, um, and one thing I feel really guilty about is when you took the job, I told you it'd be 100% remote. And this is the fourth week you've been out in San Francisco. Does your wife, Jackie, just like hate Sir Conte right now? Well, hate is a little bit of a strong word. But with Valentine's Day coming up, I did go to Union Square and I got her this chain and pendant. Hopefully to smooth things over <laughs> at home. Okay, that is a gorgeous chain, but aren't, aren't you worried it's kind of fragile? There's too many, too many links, too many points of failure. Next time I think you should go for something more solid like a paperweight or like a pocket knife. <laughs> Yeah, I'm pretty sure everyone here is going to disagree with you. <laughs> okay, I know you're more focused on tech than you are on jewelry, so let's put this into Salesforce terms. Um, the Salesforce equivalent of that shiny necklace is campaign influence reporting. How many people have heard of campaign influence reporting? Uh, it's something that's very, very important to marketers, um, and especially Pardot users. But the dream that we're all trying to get to, um, we're trying to look at opportunities and say, this is every single campaign touchpoint that influenced a sale. We're trying to look at campaigns and say, this initiative sourced X amount of revenue and influenced this amount of pipeline. Um, and then at the end of the day, we want to be able to take a look at campaign ROI performance, deals that are influenced by marketing, and be able to slice and dice this data any which way we want. Isn't this beautiful? That's an amazing dashboard. Okay. But just like that shiny necklace... Um, it depends on a lot of links in the chain to be able to work. So we need all contacts to be in Salesforce. We need marketers tracking campaigns consistently. We need sales entering opportunities. 
And then the next two layers are where things start to get even trickier. So campaign members, we can automate that with Pardot. Um, but this part is never going to happen. So getting sales to enter contact roles, saying this person was involved in this deal, it's never going to happen. It, it's data entry that um, doesn't help them in any way. So the chain falls apart. So as you have it, I actually built an app to help automate creating these entries. What? <laughs> when did you do that? I actually built it in the middle of the Accelerate program. OK, tell me more about it. <laughs> so with our app, an admin would just very quickly set it up by saying which contacts are we going to select. Right? So they can choose based on the last sales activity date or the last Pardot activity date. And then they specify which opportunities they want to run our logic on. And once it's set up, it runs behind the scenes automatically. Salespeople don't even know that we're doing their work for them. So you're telling me there's no data entry requirement for sales at all? Other than the opportunity, no. <laughs> OK, do you, do you think anybody's going to actually buy this? Well, we had four customers pay us to custom build something like this. And after the fourth one, we realized, hey, you know, maybe we can package this up and build something that other companies can take advantage of. And at $5 per user per month, for the value, for the savings that sales is going to have, we think it's a no-brainer. This is freaking genius. And this is why we pay you the big bucks. So about the big bucks. Oh, our time's up. <laughs> All right, so as we wrap up this graduation ceremony, we want to say a huge congratulations to all our graduates. I want to invite everybody up, um, all the companies that pitched and that participated in our program. And in our Salesforce Accelerate tradition, we're going to continue with our cake cutting ceremony. So if any of you, well, I think we're just taking a picture. <laughs> yes. All right. So if we want to get around. If we stand over here. <laughs> and we've learned our lesson from the last cake cutting ep episode to wheel it out and not carry it out. <laughs> yes. I realize you don't have a knife. <laughs> All right, Freddie, John. Everybody. I think we have our photographer. All right, make some noise. Congratulations.